Hey everyone, today is uh, June 13th. This is the day that Henry Sate was arraigned and it's also the day that Matt Nelson, who is here, right here, issued his statement. Uh, Matt Nelson is the person that Henry Sate attacked after Mr. Sente dumped the contents of a homeless person by the name of Greg, and I'm working on getting his name as well, in the Lake, Lake Merritt in part in, in a dumpster or a trash can nearby uh, as well. All this caught on video, and then he took Matt's cell phone after beating him and had the assistance of a friend who hasn't been identified. Um, Matt happens to be the executive director of Presente, and it's the largest Latinx uh, civil and human rights organization as it builds itself, and he issued uh, this statement right here, um, Presente.org, and says, uh, first, I want to say thank you to the many people who came forward to support and help me recover from the attack and to prepare me for the work ahead. I'm relieved that one of the men who robbed and assaulted me, Henry Sente, has been taken into custody. He should be held accountable for his actions, including his abuse of our homeless neighbor, Drew, or Greg. His arrest was the result of a, a wide-scale community participation driven by an incredible commitment to the well-being of all of Oakland's residents. While what happened to me was horrible, it does not begin to compare with the daily mistreatment of our neighbors who are unhoused, homeless, or unsheltered. I believe that housing is a human right, and I am deeply concerned with our unrelenting housing crisis. We must address the impact of growing inequality in the Bay Area, in which we have so many of our neighbors, families, and children who are homeless or living in unstable conditions. Families working multiple jobs, living couch to couch, thousands living in uninhabitable conditions or in vehicles, and anyone worried that next month they could be evicted or face foreclosure should not remain under constant threat of losing their housing. Yesterday, millions of people celebrated Oakland's championship Warriors basketball team, and if Oakland can bring home three championships in four years, we should be able to house everyone who needs shelter. Oakland can be a brilliant example of a dignified place to live for everyone, but only if we make it that way. So that's by Matt Nelson, who uh, was also attacked while filming a jogger who abused a homeless man. So, um, and Matt is absolutely right, and Matt may not know this, but hey, look, in fact, I see Matt in our neighborhood, and I have to say, <laughs> I, I, I used to see Matt all the time. Matt would just sort of look, right? He'd call to the cafes and look, but he would never say anything. And I'd see him again and again and again. So one day I said, hey, brother, I see you all the time. What's your name? He says, Matt. I said, hey, man, next time, say something. Say hi or something. I see you all the time. You just go, because <laughs> he's got these glasses. <laughs> see, Matt, now that you're okay, I could get after you. <laughs> Glad you're great. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Okay. What, what I was going to say is we used to have, uh, in 2011, we had an affordable housing budget, and Oakland did, of $111 million because of redevelopment. And even though redevelopment is back in the form of SB 618, signed into law, 628, excuse me, signed into law by uh, Jim Beal out of uh, San Jose, we have not used it at all. There's been lip service paid to using tax increment financing, we've done nothing. Yet, the legislation I refer to allows for the creation of investment, infra, infrastructure investment zones, and the legislature, legislation also calls for, within that, affordable housing. It says that the money can be used for affordable housing. It places no constraints on the size of the area. So we can do, today, what we used redevelopment to do in the past, create a gigantic affordable housing industry and, uh, well, I, I would really call it an affordable housing um, industrial complex in Oakland. We really did have that in the Bay Area. 
and it's, go it's gone, and in its wake is this gigantic problem. We can solve it. I think, candidly, a lot of the problem is uh, a lack of institutional memory. The people who are in charge today weren't in charge then, and frankly speaking, I'm gonna be very blunt here, they're more interested in saying no to something than rather, rather than constructing a way to get to yes on anything. Constructing a way to get to yes on something requires negotiation, it requires talking to people you don't necessarily like, it requires calculation, it requires math, it requires a lot of writing, it requires work. Saying no is easy, you just say no. We've got to get way over that, and we have to teach a new generation of people how to not only say yes, how to not only get to yes, but also to construct yes policies. That will, that, that will end this crisis.